Hi, everyone. Thanks for joining me for today's Field Pulse software demonstration. Now, before we go in and get started, what I, I would like to make a quick note that what you're looking at today is the web app version of the platform. However, there is a version of the platform offered for both iOS and Android specific in the App Store. That being said, the platform is a dynamic platform, meaning regardless of how many users you have on it, regardless of how many actions that they're taking, you're always looking at the most up-to-date and real-time data. Now, whenever you enter the platform for the first time, the first thing that you're going to see is a Pulse dashboard. And you'll notice that there's a lot of different views and there's a lot of data on this page. You can move these widgets around, you can delete them, but it's just meant to be a quick snapshot of what's happening in your business. From there, we would separate out the platform into a couple of main areas. We have the Customers tab, we have the Schedule, Sales, Management, and finally Company Settings. Now the first thing I'm going to jump in today is the Schedule. And so at the top of the page you'll notice we have a List view, a Gantt view, a Calendar view, and a Map view. And we can get even more granular than that. We can look at these by the day, week, month, or individual. And we can look at those by all team members across the board. We can look at them by subset teams that we've created on the back end, individuals, or we can look at all unassigned appointments and jobs. Now, that being said, the first use case I'd like to go over with you is, let's say Susanna Denman calls Jason Deagle and she says, hey, is there any way that we can reschedule this 8 a.m. to 10 a.m. appointment and move this to June the 6th? It's really just as easy as dragging and dropping, confirming your start date, your end date, and who you want to assign to that appointment, and you're good to go. The next use case I'd like to go through is what it looks like whenever we create a new job and a new customer for the first time. So a super simple process in the system. The first thing that we would select from is the account status. Is it a lead, opportunity, current customer, lost, or other? And then we would select from the account type, individual or company. I would more think of that as residential versus commercial. We can add any of our primary contact information. We can add secondary contacts, multiple email addresses. And then something that I always like to point out here is the system is integrated with Google Maps. And so as I start typing, you'll notice that it's automatically gonna go ahead and narrow down the result in terms of where I'm trying to go and autofill the rest of the fields. You'll also notice that we can add some additional custom fields here. Now the system's meant for you to be able to create a new job, send out an estimate, and um, take payment in the system in about 30 seconds or less. And so the more fields that you add for um, yourself to go through this internally, just the longer that process is gonna take you. Now, for creating the new job example, the first thing that I'm gonna go ahead and do is I'm gonna use my fictitious sister, Susanna Denman. And you'll notice it will automatically pre-populate her address and any other notes associated with her customer profile. From there, we can go ahead and type in our job title, or we can pick um, from job templates if we'd like to standardize the naming conventions across the board. After that, we're going to go ahead and select our start date, our end date, and what time the appointment's going to be held, and what team members that we'd like to assign to this specific job. Now I'm going to go ahead and jump into a job that I've already created, and the first thing that you'll go ahead and notice is Whenever I jump into this job, it shows me the start date, the end date, who's assigned to it, any job description notes, and uh, specifically where each person needs to be. Now, one difference you will see between the web app version and the mobile app version is on the mobile app, instead of showing you this map view, it'll actually show you a street view in terms of where your technician needs to go via the house, building, or location that you've entered in. The system will also keep a complete log of any changes that happen in the system on the specific job record or customer record. And then I mentioned it earlier, but here at the top right, you'll notice where it says job status. And we have um, new, in progress, pending, completed, or canceled. Some automations that you can set up with that is maybe you want a automated email to go out to your customer every time you move this from in progress to completed and have some type of message go out saying, Thanks for your business and linking to some type of job review site. Maybe you want an automated email to go out every single time any job record is created and send out an appointment confirmation to your customer, just confirming the appointment and letting them know the details of who's going to be showing up. You can also add any comments. These can be both internal, specific to the person. They can notify team managers or other team members assigned to the specific job. 
we can add in subtasks. And these subtasks, I would more think of them as do step one, two, and three before the job can be finished. We can also add any before and after photos. Um, we can add any general blueprint files. Any estimates, invoices, or purchase orders that you create in the system will also automatically go and append here. We can also keep track of timing in the platform. And so your employees can check in and check out. Now, every single time that they check in and check out, we will also go ahead and keep track of a GPS pin, essentially showing you where they checked in and where they checked out in correlation to that specific job. Jumping into the estimates, the first thing that I'll note is it does carry over the customer profile and the job record that we were just working. From there, we can go ahead and set a custom estimate title. We can set a expiration date. We can massage the different items that we'd like included on this estimate. We can set different types of internal prices and external prices. You can set markups per individual item. And so if you're needing to track things like cost versus profit analysis and how much margin you're taking away on each job, those are all possibilities in this system. We can also have a saved repository of items. And so rather than needing to create each new line item from scratch, we can pick from line items that we've already created in the system and quickly go ahead and add them to the estimate. Now, one cool feature that I always like to point out here is let's say that it's a job that you're doing all the time. It's always the same line items. It's always the same cost. It's always the same quantities. Instead of you having to add each one of those line items at a time, instead we can just go ahead and add multiple line items at once. We can add any notes. These are external notes that will appear directly on the estimate and invoice. We can add any files that will append along with the estimate and invoice when you send it out to the customer. And of course, we can add any types of contractual verbiage. Um, this is legally binding via the eSign Act. And I see everything here from work authorization, um, work completion, liability clauses to protect both your employees and your organization. And the next thing I'm going to show you is what this looks like forward facing whenever you send this to your customer. So now that the estimate has pulled up, I'm going to go ahead and showcase what this looks like whenever you're sending it to your customer. Now, I will quickly mention, you'll notice some PDF display settings here to the left. There are some things that are toggled on and there are other things that are toggled off. So the caveat that I'll mention is that I have already pre-templated this system to always make sure that these estimates and invoices format in the same way. However, if you ever wanted to make some one-off changes, for instance, maybe you don't want to display the unit price on this estimate, we can go ahead and quickly toggle that off. You'll also notice on the estimate itself the grouping that I created earlier. And so underneath that test, um, we had specifically added four line items earlier. Those line items have completely disappeared and instead we're just showcasing the service that we're offering and the total amount. You'll also notice all of the contractual verbiage that we added to the agreement earlier, and you'll notice two e-signature lines there at the bottom. Now your technicians in the field, they can both take the e-signature in person directly from the mobile app itself, or we can always go ahead and email this to the customer and request an e-signature that way. After this, the next typical use case that I'll typically see is you've gone out, um, you've given an estimate, your customer has given their e-signature, they've agreed to the services in terms of what you're looking to do. Um, your guys go out, they finish the job, and how do you get paid in our platform? So a couple of ways that we can do that today, you could either log it as cash or check, you could take a credit card payment, or you could always send them a payment request via email and have them paid directly from that email itself. Now, a couple of other things that I typically like to bring up on different software demonstrations like this is um, you can also send off any type of one-off communications from the platform, either emails or text messages at no additional charge. You'll notice you can also set up email templates or SMS templates. And so we talked about the use case earlier of every single time you create a new job record. Maybe you want a automated template to go out to your customer advising of the job start date and what team members are going to be showing up for those jobs. Maybe one of your guys in the field is running a little bit late and they want to send an on the way text and showcase how far away they are from a customer specific location. Those are also possibilities. 
one piece that I would say would be very important for any of the admins and managers in the system is having full visibility of what's happening. And so maybe you, one of your guys out in the field, they add a comment that they need some specific items to finish the job. Or maybe you have one of the job statuses that are changed from in progress to completed. Just having the ability to receive notifications in a couple of different ways can be very beneficial. And so these notifications can be set up for both you internally, but also your members in the field. And so we can send either a email notification, a in-app notification, you'll notice that bell there at the top right, or we can always send a push notification directly to the mobile app itself. Thanks for joining me today for the Field Pulse software demonstration. Please feel free to reach out if you have any questions, and thank you for your time.